What's up you guys, welcome back to another 5 Underrated Commanders video. This is a new series that I just started a couple months ago, and once a month I'm just going to go over 5 commander options that I think are actually pretty underrated. But before I get into the video, I would like to remind you that most of you who are watching right now are not actually subscribed to the channel. So I would really appreciate it if you took the time to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. We're trucking along here well past 20,000 subscribers. Got a new shirt too. I gotta <laughs> get all those broccolis on my shirt. You can't even see them because of the green screen. All right, let's get into the video. <laughs> Alright, so in no particular order, I would like to start off with the first commander option here, which is Daxos, Blessed by the Sun. This is a 2 mana, mono white demigod, with 2 power and a toughness depending on your devotion to white. Whenever another creature you control enters the battlefield or dies, you gain 1 life. Now at first this might just seem like your typical soul warden meets one half of that suture priest ability. And that wouldn't really seem as great at first until you realize having that on a commander as your commander option that you can play anytime during the game. It allows you to easily trigger many life gain triggers. If all you have to do is have a creature enter the battlefield or die, you can trigger several different cards like a Johnny's Pride Mate. And if you gain enough life, you can benefit tremendously off of something like Angelic Accord. Not to mention life gain decks are pretty solid and offer you several different win cons, such as Felidar Guardian and Aetherflux Reservoir. This is the type of commander that I highly recommend in Mono White, because if you have to choose a strategy, you might as well choose a strategy that offers you such clear win cons. A lot of what white does pretty well is combat, and while it's not really a bad thing to focus on combat for a win con, there's a lot more uncertainty when it comes to that strategy. Now since this also triggers when creatures die, you could also build an aristocrat deck and focus on similar triggers. Just that wording there, it allows you to play with so many different things. And you will have your life gain. You will be able to stay in a lot of games longer because of that. Now the next commander option here is Sidri Galvanic Genius. One of my all-time favorite commander options just because the creativity here is amazing. One of my biggest complaints about artifact decks is that they all kind of blend in together. And they just feel like the same good stuff artifact deck. Sidri took a different direction. And instead of just your typical good stuff artifacts, which you could still play, your goal here is to synergize with good artifacts that can also deal damage. What I'm really focusing on here are cards like Caltrops and Staff of Nin. Making Caltrops a creature with Death Touch and Lifelink means that whenever an opponent attacks with their creature, it's going to be dealt one damage by this with Death Touch, so that creature's going to die. And Staff of Nin just makes it so that you can ping something for one damage on top of just being extra card draw. Now similarly to Daxos, you can build a life gain deck around this with artifacts, which is why I really love her, and there you get your life gain synergies with artifacts. Oh, and hey, if you don't want to worry about it too much, just play a lot of artifacts with high CMC that you're going to benefit from by turning them into creatures like Spine of Ishsaw and Dark Steel Forge. This is really something that I'm starting to miss out of older Commander products is the introduction of brand new mechanics and not just taking advantage of something that was already kind of there. I mean, fully just bringing something brand new to the format. And then the next Commander option here is Gerard Weatherlight Hero. Now, Gerard is one of those Boros commanders that kind of breaks the mold because red and white are not supposed to be this good. They're not supposed to be anything other than combat focused. So while you have seen some pretty powerful artifact synergies lately, Gerard does offer you some pretty powerful combo potential. Even though he's not really played that much, I do think he makes a pretty decent Boros commander. When he dies, you exile him and then you return to the battlefield all artifacts and creature cards in your graveyard that were put there from the battlefield this turn. And in doing so, you should be able to combo pretty easily. And while the infinite combos with this commander are not really easy to get to, you should be able to combo at least a couple times, being able to replay your Gerard using a sack outlet like Ashnod's Altar to give you mana, and playing a creature like Dockside Extortionist will make it pretty easy for you to then just replay your commander and other cards. And if you have any way to benefit off of creatures entering the battlefield like a Perforos, or if you have any way of sacrificing them in other ways, like with a Goblin Bombardment, that's going to make it easier for you to win. This isn't like a guaranteed two-card combo win. That's what's kind of satisfying about this commander, is that it's going to take several different pieces. You may even want something like a Scrap Trawler, something like a Cathodian to help you get more mana, to help you get more of your creatures, making it easier for you to play them. 
and even outside of artifact synergies you can still go off with cards like Priest of Urabrask and Revilark, so you can keep bringing creatures back, making it easier for you to continue your turn. That's really the best part about Gerard here, is that you get a pretty cool aristocrat-focused deck in colors you wouldn't really expect to find in aristocrat strategy. And then the next commander here, second to last, we have Garna the Bloodflame. Here we have arguably another very powerful, very underrated aristocrat-themed commander. Has flash, and whenever it enters the battlefield, you return to your hand all creature cards in your graveyard that were put there from anywhere this turn. Other creatures you control have haste, so you have a clear win con here. If you can dump a ton of creatures into your graveyard, and you can bring them all back to your hand, gonna make it pretty easy for you to replay them, and your creatures gain haste. So again, you're going to want to synergize with something like a Priest of Urabrask, but this time you can really take advantage of tap abilities, so something like a Soldevi Adnate, with a good sacrifice tap ability that will give you mana, is even more valuable. And since Garna does not specify how a creature gets to your graveyard, you can take advantage of putting creatures in your graveyard using something like a Tortured Existence, and you can of course play Mill with something like a Sir Conrad. A lot of the combos that I talked about with Gerard also kind of apply to this commander too. If you're able to sacrifice using something like an Ashnaut's Altar, anything that provides you with a lot of mana, it's going to make it easier for you to continue your turn. In black, however, you have easier ways of winning because you can take advantage of creatures like Grey Merchant of Asphodel. You get a lot of triggers that deal damage or cost your opponent's life. And there's a ton of sack outlets in black too, making this even that much easier to kill off your creatures, bring them back to your hand, and you get to replay things like your Priest of Gix over and over again, making this one of the more underrated commands that you can really take advantage of aristocrat cards in Rakdos. And then the last commander, this is one I've talked about for a long time. It's always been one of the cooler looking commander cards going back to commander in 2011. Vishkal Blood Arbiter. Seven mana, white and black, flying lifelink vampire, a 5-5. You can sack a creature to put X plus one plus one counters on him, where X is the sacrificed creature's power, and then you can remove all plus one plus one counters from him to have target creature get minus one minus one until end of turn for each plus one plus one counter removed. Now outside of the hefty mana cost, I really think this is one of the better plus one plus one counter focused commanders that you can play with. You have a free sack outlet on your commander, it doesn't cost you any mana, that's always powerful. And very easily, very quickly, you'll be able to store a ton of those plus one plus one counters on them. And you don't even really have to focus that much on the second ability if you don't want to, but it's there if you need it. You can remove all of those plus one plus one counters to give a creature minus one minus one for each of them. That's enough to take care of most creatures. And since it's minus one minus one, that's great removal. It takes care of indestructibles. But that will require you to remove all of your plus one plus one counters, so I can definitely understand why Vishkal is underrated. Most people don't really see the upside in it, however, you do get a flying lifelink commander option that can just gain a ton of power out of nowhere, which is incredibly valuable for Voltron. He makes a very good Voltron commander. And I would even argue it's easier to get him up there than with something like a Karlov. Sacrificing creatures and bringing them back, that's actually incredibly easy to trigger. You're going to get a ton of plus and plus one counters. So again, if we're in white, we're going to bring creatures back with things like Karmic Guide and Revilark, and you can also focus on good aristocrat cards like Kokosho the Evening Star and Ashen Rider so you get some extra value. So that's going to do it for today's video, talking about five more underrated commanders. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Let me know what your underrated commanders are. And as always, subscribe, like, comment, share. Void here signing off. See you all next time.